Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is actually part two of a series on the balance of payments. Last lesson we learned about the different accounts and sub accounts into which transactions get sorted, including the current financial and capital account. You can find the link to that video in the description below. Today I want to talk about the relationships between these accounts and also some general trends. The first link that I want to point out is that the deficit on the current account is always equal to the surplus on the other side. In other words, if you add them together, you will always end up with a zero. The reason for this is the floating exchange rate. This is actually as much detail as you need for the HSC course. Um, you're not required to actually explain it in any more detail. but. Uh, if you're interested, I'm going to go through two explanations. If that doesn't interest you, you can skip to link number two. Also, you probably would find these explanations easier if you have a basic understanding of the floating exchange rate. So perhaps watch my video on that first. My first explanation is to use linear equations to show the role of the floating exchange rate in balancing the two sides. Basically, the floating exchange rate means that the value of the dollar is established where demand for the dollar equals supply. For those that haven't watched my video on floating exchange rates yet, Demand represents the amount of inflows into Australia and supply represents outflows. So let's write this down into an equation with outflows on the left and inflows on the right. If you expand these components, inflows include export revenue going into box, returns on investments going into NPY and investment inflows going into KFA. Outflows include import spending from BOGS, interest and dividends going out through NPY and investment outflows from KFA. We can rearrange this equation so that all components that make up the current account deficit go on the left and the KFA surplus components on the right. And looking at the final equation, we have proven that the current account deficit is equal to the KFA surplus. My second explanation is to use an example of how the floating exchange rate will adjust the figures to make both sides balance. Imagine if Australia received a lot of investments, causing a greater surplus in the KFA side. The Australian dollar will appreciate due to this inflow. An appreciated currency makes Australian exports less competitive and imports more attractive, which leads to a worsened current account deficit. So you can see how movements on one side causes opposite movements on the other side. However, in reality, this is not a perfect equation. They might not always add up to zero because there can be unrecorded or inaccurate transactions. That's why to make the two sides balanced, there is a net errors and emissions category in the KFA side. Now with that, let's move on to link number two. The second link that I want to point out is that the strongest correlation between left and right is between the NPY account on the left and a financial account on the right. A capital and financial surplus usually results in a larger deficit in the net primary income account. This is because the surplus is made up of investors lending money to Australia. These investments or lending must earn some kind of return for its owner, which is a debit in the NPY account. For example, lenders lending a loan to Australia contribute to the financial account surplus. They'll want some interest repayments, which are debits in the NPY. Investors buying Australian shares or equity are a credit to the financial account, and they'll want dividends, which is a debit in the NPY. As you can see, the greater the surplus in the financial account, the greater the NPY deficit. So these are the two key links between the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the balance of payments. I hope I've made it easier for you to understand these relationships. Again, it may help if you have some prior understanding of the floating exchange rate, and I'll have videos for that too. My next video will be on the influence on the current account deficit, and that's actually where the big marks are. Subscribe so you don't miss out. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment, as well as share the video. And I look forward to making HSC Economics easy for you next time.